Yo, yo, hello guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're back on Mad24, and today we're back on our franchise, and uh, I've had the game for a while now, I've played three regular season games, uh, like 11 minutes, so I've been, I've got a few games under my belt, I also played, excuse me, I've also played preseason games, so Around this time, I'd say I have enough game play to, to kind of see what kind of year it's going to be. And there's some improvement. There is for, for sure some improvement. There's obviously things that are still not up to par where they should be. But overall, I'm enjoying it so far. It's still very early in the year. So we'll see how it goes. You guys let me know how you're enjoying it. Um... Yeah, we're coming off of the Saints game that you guys wouldn't have seen. I will throw some highlights of how that game ended up ending because it was a very good game. And uh, we ended up pulling away the win. And now we're sitting at a 2-1 record. We haven't advanced the week yet, so we don't know how the Bears are, Lions, and Vikings yet. But it's a very tight division. And um, we're playing about around exactly how I thought we'd be playing. We're... Our defense is looking pretty good, despite that week one hiccup, and our offense is struggling uh, to move the ball. Now, going in, getting out of this game, first let's just take a look real quick. I just want to show you guys. Um, It was a very good game, <clears throat> passing-wise. The best, I would say, out of the whole year for us. Arguably, uh, Jordan Love threw two touchdown passes, no interceptions. This is the best game he's had, but he's been under pressure so much, and our wide receivers have been dropping the ball so much. It's really hard to blame it all on him, but then at the same time, there are instances where he's like overthrowing, and it just looks really bad. One move I didn't make was Raheem Mostert out of the free agency. I picked him up um, a week prior to the game. Uh, he, had, he had a little bit of practice with the team and then he hit the field and oh my goodness did he You know shine I mean he was amazing and I'm so glad we got him and the reason I did that is because we have no speed on this team At running back there's all of these guys feel sluggish Aaron Jones even is pretty slow for being as good as he is Raheem brings that speed and it actually really helps mix it up uh, in the run game uh, and it was Christian Watson and Dobbs who really came in clutch. Michael Thompson kind of had a went off a little bit. Overall, this is how our team did perform stat-wise in that game. I am gonna again throw in the the final bit of how, the end of the game at the end of this video. I think. Um, Kenny Clark, 12 tackles, 10 of them being behind the line of scrimmage. This guy is a freaking beast if <laughs> he may be the best player in Madden 24 I'm telling you this guy is a beast and he got a superstar x-factor like after week two right off the rip uh, and he and he gets two sacks here as well so <clears throat> in this game so he's been the lifeblood of this defense and then Douglas steps up and has himself a day with two interceptions tying him himself with um, Jarir Alexander, I think. Uh, Lucas Van Ness hasn't been as good as I was hoping. He was pretty quiet in today's game as well. We are going to take a look at stats. That's kind of what uh, I was wanting to do here. One of my big gripes for this game right now, Madden 24, is the... The menus are so sluggish. They're so slow. It's so bad. We are on the PS5, and we're, we're a few games into the into this um, generation. And uh, it's not the console's fault. It's EA's. Like, why is it, you know, when I'm clicking, you know, why is it taking so long to move around? But anyways, this is pretty cool. You got your, you know, your little 20 to 17. There you go. Bam. Look at that. Uh, I like the, the imagery, actually. It does make it come to life a little more. So that's pretty cool. I'm um, sorry, my nose is running, and I, it's because I had spicy salsa right before I started recording this. So give me one second. This is what he's looking like three weeks into 
having the the helm to the team here. You know, he's on top the the wagon and he's he's whipping the horses, right? This is his team. And uh, this is what he's done so far. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's about what I expect expected. Um again, not I'm not sitting here blaming him, uh but I mean he is a lower overall man. EA really kind of did him dirty. Yeah, he's uh, it's gonna be hard to get this to be Jordan Love's team, and I I just don't know if I want to put in that work, man. I don't know if it's worth it, especially since he's got a contract year coming up. He's gonna have to play differently. Right now, this isn't good enough for me. So we'll see. He does have that QB of the future tag still, so we possible trading away. I'm not thinking about trading him yet. I know this is early. He's he's gonna be playing all year for us. Um, but I'm just saying right now it's not looking too good. Uh, Aaron Jones get, is getting 3.8 yards per carry every time he touches the ball, and he's definitely getting most of the carries. I am going to start s splitting the carries between all three here as we try to work in a Raheem uh, a lot more. He played very well. I want to work in AJ Dillon as well, but we you can kind of see we're struggling to run the ball and rightfully so because we have a very bad O-line, but in the receiving game Christian Watson Romario dubs Dobbs, however you want to say that Christian Watson is looking very good. I do want to keep him around um, For some reason it doesn't show their drops And if it did Boy, let me tell you We'd probably want to cut everybody. Um, Jaden Reed has also done very well. Um, the rookie. We're not sure what he is yet, but yeah. So that's kind of what we're looking like. We have no tight ends. Uh, it's like they're not even on the field because, I mean, dude, they you throw it to them and they drop the ball. Like, dude, this whole team, this whole wide receiving core is probably the worst receiving core I've ever had to deal with. It's very bad. Almost as bad as our O-line outside of David. Um, we're giving up a lot of sacks and we, and we got injuries now due, um, on the O-line. It's just not looking good. Uh, the O-line's got to be addressed, I think, in for agency or the draft somehow. Uh, Darnell Savage has actually played very well. He's been our tackling machine with 30 there. Uh, Campbell, 26. Kenny Clark, man, again, leading the team in, in sacks, which... <laughs> three games in, three sacks, hey, that's a sack a game, but where's everybody else at, right? You know, like, that's what I'm wondering. Um, Quay Walker's playing pretty well, you know, at support, you know, middle linebacker. I want to see him grow a little more, but he's at least getting <clears throat> involved in some tackles. Uh, Rudy Ford's done pretty well. Um, I'm sorry, dude, tackle? 19 tackles out of his 21 is behind the line. Kenny Clark is a cheat code, man. Oh my goodness, like, dude is a cheat code. Wow. But yeah, like, we, we're struggling to get to the quarterback, which isn't very, I don't know. I thought we, a part of this team would, we would be able to with, with Rashawn Gary. He hasn't even recorded a sack yet. And we do send him in plenty of times. And he's on his contract year. So I, I don't know. We're going to keep that in mind. He's definitely playing for a contract. I'll tell you that right now. And for interceptions, we're doing good. Uh, Alexander with two. Douglas with two. I like it. Our rookie kicker, he's played perfect on the year so far. And then the punter, there you go. So that leads me to actually want to talk a little bit about... Um, about the players that are that are up and oh I wanted to show you guys my my official season one sliders for everything what we are playing season one on if you wanted to try and implement it into your franchise um, and it's it's not just gameplay sliders it's a lot more if you really want to be immersed the resign interest bar <clears throat> means everything with my sliders like Rashawn Gary has no interest at coming back here. He's an 89 overall superstar dev. Normally you could just throw a bunch of money at him, overpay for him, and you're going to get him. 
that's not the case with these because I have the the uh, interest slider set to very hard or you know it's gonna be it's gonna be harder to get him even necess even maybe impossible if he just doesn't want to play he just doesn't want to play and it's looking like that is the case I don't really know uh, we could take a look at him that's uh, so, right let's have a conversation with him what's going on Rashawn I'm pretty uh, disappointed in the way that you, you've been playing lately I may not even want you to come back but uh, what is it that's bothering you well he's not a scheme fit so if we really, really wanted Rashawn Gary back, we could try and get him to feel more comfortable with the playbook by trying, maybe changing the scheme or something. I don't know if that's what you want to do, um, but it would help because that's his biggest negative is he doesn't like our, our the base 4-3 defense. Um, values financials, uh, highest offer is kind of in the middle. In big market Green Bay, I, I'm not sure. I guess he doesn't like the market in Green Bay. I guess that's what that's saying. You can't change none of those things. Um, but you can change scheme fit, which is the biggest negative impact. Now, that would affect other players. And with his performance right now on the field, yes, he's a 90 overall. Yes, he is superstar dev. But if he's not impacting the team, he's not impacting the team. So I'm going to wait before we do anything with... Rashawn Gary and he may not stay you know that's just is what it is but uh yeah so just that's something that's gonna be in my franchise it's gonna make things a lot harder on me and a lot more interesting and I'm excited for that because it actually works I've tested it I probably if I don't address his interest bar there he's probably not gonna resign re uh, with me and I like that if a player doesn't want to go he's just not gonna go um AJ Dillon on the other hand if I did want to bring him back um, I could pretty easily because he wants to stay here um, and he wants a two-year deal which actually is making me think about doing it but I'm holding off for right now I want to see how I, I like him because I do have the the regression sliders set to as realistic as I can get them for this specific position <laughs> which is you know the running back position um, and he's 25 so I just know he's gonna hit that cliff at some point around 27 28 29 not that I would have him around that long but he is a, a 79 overall so he doesn't have a lot of athleticism already a lot of skill to to hang in there for long so I know that he isn't gonna last long and I just I don't know if, if paying him just to be a backup role is is on my list of priorities right now and so that's why I'm gonna hold off for a little while here but he wants to play for now with with Green Bay but again he is a backup he's not even a starter anyways we'll see keep keep him in mind but just know that age 25 for a running back with my sliders he he's actually coming up to the end of his year you know you, you might get him for five more years maybe but he's not going to be playing at a high level um when he gets closer to 30 so darnell savage gonna probably trying to get him back but then you look at the interest and it's looking like he's probably gonna go john runyan that sucks because uh that that stings a little bit because i actually want to keep him and really, it's just, I guess it's just going to be based on if he wants to go or not. His bar isn't all the way down, so there's a chance we could sweet talk him in to staying. I hope he does, man. Um, that'd be one less thing to worry about, but we'll see. He is a normal dev at 26, so I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Rudy Ford doesn't want to play. I'm not really too worried about that. Same with this guy. Um, Neeson Nixon, a 26-year-old corner. Now, corner is another position that I have the sliders um, a little more realistic. That's more of an athletic position. You got to be quick. You got to be fast. You got to have that top end speed. Um, and you don't really see many corners in their late to mid 30s, even early 30s, dominating. And so you're looking at this guy, and he only wants a one-year deal. We could probably work it out and keep him but uh long term he's 26 and i don't think you know he, he'd be aging for sure 
But he is a 68 of Raw, and I'm not that worried about it. Right now, that's what we're working with, though. These oh, lower overalls, these players are actually, some of these players are actually seeing the field. That's how bad our team is right now. Yeah, so you see it. Eric Stokes, by the way, as soon as, now he has his fifth year option coming up, but as soon as it comes up, I'm, I'm signing him ASAP. Bring him to the squad, and then when that year comes up, I'm signing him to a big deal. As long as no injuries happen, as long as he's happy and wants to play, he's he's done good so far. Eric Stokes has done very very good for us, <clears throat> and that leads me to one thing to you notice: like it's gonna be harder to to build a team when there's players like this that just don't want to stay, and there's a lot. There's more players not wanting to stay than there are players wanting to stay. And I don't know if that's how if if it's gonna be like that every year. I hope not. Because if it is like this, it's gonna make it very hard. But I have the setting to the hardest thing and which means a lot of these players I don't even have an option to pick them up. So it's gonna be interesting. We'll see. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Um I have thrown um some of the players from my college universe in the draft this year. I don't know any of the overalls. I've had them submitted by someone else, um, so I don't see anything. And I, I just basically said, just make it random. I don't care. Um, they could be a bust, it, it could be whatever. It doesn't really matter. So I don't know anything about these players other than um, <clears throat> you know, what, what I scout. And uh, we'll, I'll be doing this each year. I'll be adding some players from my college um, series in the past on my channel. And so one big name we know he's got to, he's going to be good is uh, Jonah Wolf. Going to be keeping our eyes, our eyes out on him. We definitely are probably going to be going for a quarterback. Uh, ben Lane is another one he played for Miami. Uh, keep keep our eyes out for him. And uh, just really any of these top five quarterbacks. If we could just land one of them, I think we would be better off than Jordan Love. I don't know. I don't know. Right now, that's what it, what it feels like. Uh, for running backs, we got Marvin Blake. He's from my college series, and uh, we'll be keeping our eyes on him. Not that I'm too really worried about running backs right now. Um, and then we have Cap Keister, the son of Zach Keister. Uh, who is in this draft as well? So yeah, we'll keep that in mind. Um, really, uh, we gotta address o offensive line, but we do have Gavin Green. So keep your eyes out for Gavin Green. He is from the college series as well. Corner, I could actually maybe. Ooh, then again, I don't know. I just seen this man coverage is a D, and I like to run man. Yeah, Gavin Green's not looking like... Yeah, I know. He's not looking like the guy. Probably won't be picking him then. Uh, we'll see. I'm not really looking at taking a corner first this year anyways. I'm really looking at the offensive line. And I'm hoping I can just address the offensive line for Green Bay this year. Because it's pretty bad right now. We're struggling for sure to keep uh, Jordan Love protected. Also, another thing, you know, they have kind of overhauled the, what's it called, the um, the franchise staff. So each player or each um, coach has its own tree and unique abilities and stuff. So there is actually a reason to fire and hire different different um, coordinators and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'm not going to get into any of that right now because this isn't really like a review um, video. But... Did want to show you guys the injuries going in to week four. We're going to sim the rest of week three. Take a look at the results. Take a look at standings and then end this. But um, Josh Myers, man. Let's just go ahead and get the, the bad news out of the way. He's done. He's done. And uh, he kept going down with injuries, man. Riddled with it. But then, you know, it finally it was a serious one. And, uh, yeah, he took... A seizing ending uh, injury and that's unfortunate he is our starting center and now we will be even weaker than we were 
So, yeah. Uh, we're also without Ellington Jenkins, who is actually one of the better, like, the best linemen we have on the uh, O-line, other than David. And he's out for three more weeks with an abdominal tear. And then the defense got beat up a little bit with Slayton and Eric Wilson. So the O-line really hurts, though, because we were already struggling with, with Ellington on the field, but we really are struggling bad now. So that's the injuries that the Packers are dealing with. We're sitting at a 2-1 record. I mean, I don't think the playoffs are in our future, but if the Vikings aren't taking this division, then I think it's up for anyone to take it. And I do think we, we could have a shot and we could sneak away with winning this division if we can stay healthy the rest of the way. That's really what's going to determine, I think, the, uh, the future of this season. So let's go ahead and advance this week, go into week four. We're going to take a look at the rest of the results around the week and take a look at the stats. Why not? A short week because we are playing on a, a night game, so that's going to be interesting. Do all this off camera. Oh, crucial catch. Intercept cancer. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I like the I like the graphics, man. I do like the graphics. Oh, wow. What is this? Huh? What? The Lions head into Green Bay this week for a Thursday night matchup versus the Packs. Bro. Okay. I like it. You don't really get to see in the stadium. Oh, you, know, you kind of got a peek in there. You got a little bit of a peek up in there. <laughs> so, we're, so we're playing Thursday night. I like this. Add more of this, though. This is probably the only thing you're going to see. But that's cool, EA. I would just do more with it. Maybe show some highlights of whatever. I don't know. That's pretty. That, that, I, that caught me by surprise. Okay. Wow, it'll be another 20 years before you get something new like that. So taking a look at those stand, let's just look at standings. Why not? Let's just take a look at the standings real quick. And uh, you're looking at the Browns. The Browns. I'm looking at the Browns too, guys. I, I know. I'm looking. We're both, we're all looking at the Browns being on top of the league right now. Wow. After three, three weeks. Okay. Then it's the 49ers, Ravens. Wow, there's a lot of 3-0 teams. Bills, Eagles, Broncos, Chiefs. There's seven undefeated teams still going into week four. Um, the Broncos surprised me. Um, and the Browns are, if you ask me. Okay. Just that quick glance, they, they surprised me. Uh, the Bears surprised me. They did lose last week, though, so that's good. Uh, they're 2-1. Lions are 2-1. Ah, okay. So, man, it's a tight division. Um, the Giants 2-1, Jets, Saints, wow, that means the Vikings lost, and so have the Dolphins, the Dolphins are on a two-game losing streak, Cowboys finally win a game, same with the Steelers, yeah, the Vikings are on a two-game losing streak, they're 1-2, and two. and um, now you do got to remember they are without um, their running back, Madison, for two, uh, one more game, and then they're going to be coming back. <clears throat> for the winless teams, oh, look at the Bengals finally winning a game. They're one and two. But for the winless teams, it's the Titans, Commanders, Raiders, Colts, Rams, Buccaneers, and Panthers. You know, I, I don't know. That's, I don't think the Titans are going to be zero and three, <clears throat> and I don't think. The Buccaneers are going to be 0 3, or the Panthers in real life. But I don't know. I think, I don't know. <laughs> pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. This isn't real life. This is the MFL. Okay. But um, as far as after three weeks of, have been played, what is the. Uh, the rest of the league looking like. Let's take a look for performance-wise. And it'll be cool. If you guys do want to be added into the universe, I don't mind doing it. So just submit a player down below. Because um, I'm having fun, man. Why not? I'd like to, I could, you know, see how you guys perform. Um, 
So Mac Jones, Aaron Rodgers, and CJ Stroud are your leading three for passing yards. That's surprising for sure. But I will say this, the stats, the simulation stats have gotten better so far what I've noticed because like last year you wouldn't see this. CJ Stroud, six and six, six touchdowns, six interceptions, like you wouldn't see nothing like that. Everybody was just an amazing player. Justin Herbert's playing amazing. Jalen Hurts, eh, not doing so good. Kurt Cousins, 3-5. Derek Carr, 3-3. TL, doing pretty good. All right. Patrick Mahomes, not sure what's happening to him so far. Uh, Jordan Love, we're right there in the middle of the pack, 4-4. Four four. Uh, Joe Burrow, Desmond Ritter has thrown more interceptions. So I'm like I'm liking these stats. They look a little different. They look more. It's refreshing. This isn't bad. Who's throwing the most? Okay, eight so far is the most interceptions. Oh my goodness, Anthony Richardson. He's gonna get benched. Oh, my my guy, my poor guy. Maybe it was that nose, the nose surgery that that he had, man. I, I, man, that's. I hate to see it, but you know I like it at the same time. I like seeing this because it's it's variety. Not every quarterback's just doing good. It's not, nothing personal on Anthony now, but I do like to see some players struggle, and like Jimmy Garoppolo one and five and Baker Mayfield. Oh my goodness! Okay, there's a little bit of variety here. So Jordan Love's not looking as bad as I thought. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, um, I did want to see: is there any quarterbacks that have missed any games at all? And I don't think, yeah, so everyone, every quarterback's healthy. There are really no quarterback injuries for some reason. I just, it's again the same. So for running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubbs, and Javante Williams. I don't think Williams is going to do that after that injury he had in real life. But hey, it's good to see him doing it in this. Um, yeah, Jonathan Taylor's still dominating, like always. I know we're not going to be up here anywhere close because we are just so bad at running the ball. There we are right there. Yeah, 3.8. And I don't think we've... Yeah, he hasn't even gotten in, into the end zone yet. For receiving, though, it's Robert Woods. That's surprising. Christian? Whoa, Christian Watkins. Watson. What, did I say Watkins? Watson. Is second in the NFL, boys, for yards receiving. That means he's a deep threat. Look at that. Because he's got 14 receptions. He's getting 20 yards per catch, baby. Three of them touchdowns. Wow. Okay, interesting. I like it. I like it a lot. Christian, out of all the uh, wide receivers that I probably will end up keeping for a long haul, he's. I think he is one of them. And uh, this is why he is second in the league for t receiving touchdowns as well. Heck yeah. Right. For defense, our, our, for offensive line, our offensive line is trash. Uh, that's all you need to know. For defense, though, it's Caden Ellis that leads in tackles. For sacks, Harold Landry. Now, you got to do it this way just because... EA didn't fix the uh, little glitch. But there you go. Derek Brown with four and a half. Dunlap, four and a half. So I guess the three from... Um, from Kenny Clark isn't bad. But we need other people to step up on our team. For interceptions, Miles Jack... Douglas has two, Alexander has two, Stephon Gilmore. So it looks like, well, four. There you go. Tyson Campbell has four already. Patrick Sertain, three. And Julian Love that they got through a, a trade at the beginning of the year has two. So those are the stats. That's the uh, the league so far here. This is season 21, technically, on my channel. Um, we're off to a, a start already, man. Just like that, man. It, Comes and goes so quickly here. Um, 
I think yeah, that's gonna ra that's gonna do it. We may watch the. I'm not sure what game I'm gonna cover. Maybe we cover this game, the Packers. I mean, we're two and one, and the the lines are two and one. That's probably what we'll watch. I do want to get tune into some other um, teams as well. I know we tuned into the Eagles um, Vikings game. I think it'd be cool to tune into the Chiefs versus Jets. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think we're gonna I'm gonna play my game, but we for week. What week is this? Week four. I think we're gonna get the the Jets versus Chiefs gameplay. I want to see Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes. That's probably what we're gonna be bringing um, in next episode. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna throw up the highlights though of the the Saints game now, and I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Let me know what you're thinking. How are you liking Madden? 24 uh, Is it still a failed game to you or are you actually like pleased with it? Let me know also if you guys want to see my My sliders and stuff then let me know and I'll show you everything on how I'm playing my franchise for season one um, So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it though. That's gonna be it for me Let's hop into those highlights and you guys have a good day. Peace. Aren't they moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here. Now a man picked up after two years in Detroit. It's Jamal Williams. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Jamal Williams is second. They go back to the ground, this time Mostert. There he goes, left side. Down the left sideline. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 52 yards rushing for him now. And just his... They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Touchdown, Packers. Romeo Dobbs. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Packers are an extra point away from around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll get things started up at Ford Field in Detroit. And it's the Lions who are out in front as they play the second quarter. The Lions try to hold on and claim victory. We'll stay in the NFC North as we head over to Minneapolis to check on the Vikings at home in U.S. Bank Stadium. And you can see, currently, they trail in that ball game. Justin Herbert with two touchdown passes. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore and check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. Two touchdown passes there for Lamar Jackson. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely. And understanding where he is on the field as he headed. Now the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Kenny Clark to throw its car. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Rasul Douglas picks it. And the Packers are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. So they tried to take the deep shot there, but this defense up to the task. And a lot of times when you air a ball out like this, if it does get intercepted, there's going to be a lot of space out there to set up a return. And remember, up there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Off the play fake, Love. He finds his man complete. It's Reed. Another good game. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And touchdown! Christian Watson, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Packers have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead. Shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. 
And they need their best drive of the game right here. This one complete to his running back, Jamal Williams. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at it. The gun now on third down. Carr. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Here's Carr. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That's a pretty play. Now Carr again. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it goes at the five. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, there holds confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him. Looking for Thomas. He's got him. Touchdown, New Orleans. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Saints are an extra point of wall on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. They come up now on second and two. Play fake. Here's Love. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. On play action. Love to throw. And that will be incomplete. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. And his kick here is good. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It Car. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Rasul Douglas picks it, and the return across midfield into the 46-yard line. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. Well, we all just got a heck of a show, partner. This was a close game for a long time. Close at half, close down the stretch. Home team finds a way to get it done, a narrow victory. Yeah, they finished with a flourish, didn't they? Because there were times where each side looked like they were the better team out there. And the outcome was in doubt for much of this game. Every snap seemingly more important than the previous one. Great effort from the guys visiting. But in the end, how about those guys in their home stadium finding a way to win? So for the Packers, it's back-to-back -back victories now after the week one defeat as they move to two and one. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, they too will exit with a two and one record. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.